Good morning. In our last session, we have seen the various optical properties studied under EPL and Krosnikov. Now, we'll turn over to the different minerals and their optical properties. Today, we are going to discuss about quartz, orthoclase, microclean, albite, and labradorite. Quad is a pure silica whose composition is SiO2, whereas orthoclase, microclean, albite, and labradorite are the members of feldspar group, where orthoclase and microclean is an alkali feldspar, whereas albite and labradorite belongs to plagioclase feldspar. We have already studied the physical properties of these minerals in our last semester. So let us discuss the optical properties of individual minerals. First, we will discuss about the quartz. Quartz is the quite common and dominant mineral on the Earth's surface. Optically, in plain polarized light, quartz is colorless. And as you know that in physical properties, the cleavages are absent. Henceforth, in thin section also, you will not be able to find any of the cleavages. The relief of the quartz grain is low. As I have already discussed that the appearance of the border of the mineral grain is the relief. If the border grain is dark, then the relief will be high or it will be low. Here, the boundary of the quartz, you can see in the picture, it is quite faint. And hence, you can say that the relief of the quartz is low. The form of the quartz varies from euhedral to anhedral. It depends that to which type of rock the mineral grain belongs. Some rocks may show euhedral crystals, whereas some rocks may show anhedral crystals. But it varies from euhedral to anhedral. Pleochroism, no, we cannot find any pleochroism in it. Now let us see the properties under cross nickel. First, we must understand that, that it is not necessary that the mineral grain or any mineral grain will show all the properties. The mineral grain can show some selective properties only. So let us discuss about the cross nickel orientation. In cross nickel position, this mineral grain is anisotropic. So if it is an anisotropic, that means it will not turn into black. The first thing what we have seen in the cross nickel is this anisotropism. The next most important aspect of quartz is the wavy extinction. The extinction shown by quartz is wavy in nature or cloudy in nature. You will never get the bands, you know, alternate white and black bands. You will get a wavy or a cloudy uh, extinction in the quartz grain. So it could be a diagnostic property of it. The interference color is low of first order. First order color means it belongs to the white to grayish color and they are named as first order color. Biorefringence is low. As you know that biorefringence and interference color are interrelated. Let us see the uh, next mineral, orthoclase. Orthoclase is the alkali feldspar and its uh, chemical composition is uh, uh, KALSI3O8, whereas this actually belongs to the alkali feldspar where they are light in color. As you have studied them in the physical properties where their form is tabular, they have perfect cleavages, etc. etc. Let us discuss them in the optical properties. In plain polarized light, orthoclase is colorless, 
cloudy nature can appear on alteration but basically you can you will get the colorless nature cleavage of two sets are visible as we have discussed that orthoclase have perfect cleavages the two sets of cleavages are commonly visible relief is low and form is uhedral and mostly they are in prismatic shapes prismatic means elongated shapes okay they have lets prism like lets okay so they are much common in the thin section if we we'll see the uh, configuration of crosnicol where the orthoclase is anisotropic anisotropic means of course it will not turn into black extinction uh is slightly present you can see over here in the slide or in the picture you can see the extinction but uh, not prominent one okay so we don't we don't get any prominent extinction in orthoclase interference color is low first order now we'll discuss about the microclean microclean is also a member of feldspar series here in plagioclase light or sorry in in plain polarized light the color is colorless of course the cleavage of two sets are visible the relief will be low and the form is uhedral prismatic in uh, the configuration of cross nickel the um, microclean is anisotropic no doubt the most distinguished character of the microclean is the extinction the extinction pattern uh, shown by microclean is cross hatching you can see in the picture the down picture where where you can see that the cross bands of black and white can be assessed these cross bands are nothing but the cross hatchings so this is the unique type of uh, extinction shown by microclean the interference color of microclean is low first order so the orthoclase and microclean was the alkali feldspar now we'll turn over to the plagioclase uh, feldspar where we are we are going to discuss two minerals the first is albite albite is the soda rich plagioclase feldspar where the sodium is the dominant uh, component whereas in labradorite the percentage of calcium increases in a plain polarized light the color is colorless the cleavage of course two sets are visible relief is low and the form is somehow subhedral prismatic subhedral because it, there will be a prisms but they are somewhat subhedral the orthoclase the microclean albite labradorite uh, as they belongs to one feldspar series because of which many of the characters are similar in a cross nickel configuration you can see that the uh, mineral grain is anisotropic the extinction is present uh, basically oblique extinction is visible and you can measure oblique uh, sorry the extinction angle on the petrological microscope the twinning is present dominant twinning can be seen in the white and the first order interference colors are visible in cross nickel configuration you can see in the picture or in the uh, micro photograph where the quartz hornblende and plagioclase you can compare them yeah how the quartz and hornblende is quite different in appearance with respect to the plagioclase and you can see that the straight you know black and white uh, bands are quite visible and you must know that the bands uh, of black or white becomes broader with the increase in calcium percentage okay so if the subsequent minerals with higher calcium percentage will definitely have broader bands the next mineral which is the last of today's lecture is labradorite the labradorite is also a member of feldspar group in a plain polarized light it is colorless of course the cleavage are present relief is low forms are prismatic so in plain polarized light the form is not visible distinctively but the moment you put sir the analyzer you can see that the lets uh, are 
easy to identify. Okay, so basically the relief is low and because of which you cannot uh, distinguish different lengths. But on cross nickel configuration, you can identify or you can distinguish among them, between them. Uh, in cross nickel orientation, the mineral grain is anisotropic. Extinction is of course present. It is very visi it is quite visible in the given microphotograph. The twinning is present and the worst order low interference colors is shown by labradorite. So this was all about the optical properties of some selected minerals. Let us discuss them, let us revise them. Okay. So today it was the session on optical properties of quartz, orthoclase, microclean, albite, and labradorite. In quartz, the plane polarized light, the color is colorless, cleavages are absent, relief is low, the form can be evaded to anhedral, and it is an anisotropic with distinctive characteristic of wave extinction, low first order color. Then we have seen the orthoclase where it is a member of feldspar series. It is colorless, two sets of cleavage are visible and relief is very low. Prismatic lengths are very common. Low first order interference color can be seen. In microclean, the distinctive property of uh, it is cross hatching. In the second micrograph, you can see the cross hatching. Then the albite, it is the, uh, you know, it is the first member of plagioclase series where the uh, grains are colorless, two sets are visible, subhedral forms are there, oblique, uh, oblique extinction is present, and of course, first order color are visible. Then the labradorite, where the colorless crystals, or colorless minerals with low relief and prismatic habits are there. It's an isotropic and extinction is present, and twinning is also prominently present in it. The interference color is of first order. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.